Hi, it's Tom, and in this video, we're going to talk about object-oriented programming. We'll look at what is a programming paradigm. We'll review procedural programming. I'll give an overview of object-oriented programming, and we'll talk briefly about key object-oriented programming features. So what is a programming paradigm? When we talk about a programming paradigm, we're talking about a distinct way of thinking about programming. We're looking at fundamental ideas and big concepts and theories. Certain languages are tied to a specific paradigm. For example, C is a procedural language, whereas C sharp is object oriented. Other languages are multi paradigm languages, meaning that they support more than one paradigm. For example, C++ supports both the procedural and object-oriented approach. Initially, the first high-level languages were procedural. The key ideas in procedural programming stem from the concept of structured programming, which we've talked about quite a bit so far. Procedural programming is imperative, meaning that you have to specify a list of step-by-step -step instructions to produce a desired end state. Another key idea in procedural programming is breaking down your code into modules that are called procedures. In C or C++, these are called functions. Then what you do is you invoke your procedure using a procedural call, a procedure call. Procedural programs have several general characteristics. Typically, the flow of execution in a procedural program is simple and linear. Usually, the focus is on manipulating data through various mathematical and logical means. Typically, data is represented with basic types rather than sophisticated structures. The next major evolution in structured programming was called object-oriented programming. It was developed in the 1960s at MIT, and it was linked to artificial intelligence and simulations. It became a dominant paradigm in the 1990s. It was driven by the popularity of graphical user interfaces, as well as the availability of languages like C++ that supported object-oriented programming. Let's look at some general characteristics of object-oriented programs. Typically, an object-oriented program isn't as linear as a procedural program. For example, a program that's uh, based on a Windows form with buttons and text boxes, um, it's waiting for things to happen. It doesn't start, load into memory, do some stuff, and then unload from memory. Um, there's other things going on. And while the program is running, it can take many different paths. In object-oriented programming, there's a great deal more focus put on the structure and meaning of data, as well as how that data will interact uh, with other data. Um, so there's less focus on just simply the step-by-step -step procedure um, that there might be in a procedural program. Without a doubt, there's a lot more effort that goes into the design stages of an object-oriented program, and you'll, you'll experience this as you work through the exercises in the lab. The trade-off is that the more effort that you put into the design stage uh, means that uh, your code and, and what you're actually creating has uh, a great deal uh, more potential to be reused in future applications. Related to the idea of reusing your code and extending it into new applications is the idea that you can um, create a standard for representing a specific type of data and other programmers or you yourself later on can then uh, create new applications um, using those data types. Even with the extra effort that goes into the design stages, Overall, taking an object-oriented programming approach can significantly reduce uh, development time. And in a professional setting, reduced development time translates into uh, uh, reduced costs. Although there are some clear benefits to an object-oriented programming approach for in developing applications, um, there is a trade-off. It's intrinsically more complex 
and can actually produce um, uh, machine language code, native code, that is less efficient than a procedural approach. Some of you might find if you gravitate more towards ad hoc programming or doing really s small programs that are just automating tasks, an object-oriented approach might not actually be the best approach for you to use. On the other hand, if you're gravitating more towards application development, object-oriented programming, uh, the benefits outweigh uh, the uh, inefficiencies. The fundamental concept in object-oriented programming is objects. Objects represent the basic building block of an object-oriented programming application. An object encapsulates part of the application. Um, they can be used to represent a process or a type of data or something else a little bit more abstract. Uh, for example, uh, in our uh, programs where we were manipulating files, we used file stream objects to represent the connection between our program and a file that was on a disk. Um, so those were objects. A class is a definition for a type of object. And what it does is it specifies what attributes an object will have and what behaviors an object will have. There are several key features or, or concepts in object-oriented programming. The first one is encapsulation. Encapsulation is the binding together of data and those procedures that manipulate that data. So we'll spend some time talking about encapsulation. Inheritance refers to basing a new class or object on an existing class and only focusing on those elements that make the new class or object unique. Um, this is a way that we can really tap into code reuse, so we're not always reinventing the wheel. Another key concept in object-oriented programming is polymorphism, and it's the idea that an operation or a procedure can be applied to more than one kind of object or type. And we've uh, done a little bit of this already uh, in our uh, unit three when we did some function overloading um, as well as um, function templates. So these were forms of polymorphism. So that's a very brief overview of the uh, concept of object-oriented programming. In the next videos we'll get deeper into encapsulation, uh, attributes and behaviors, classes, as well as inheritance and polymorphism. Thanks very much.